Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. Man, I cannot believe it has been so long since I've had the opportunity to sit down and actually record one of these. I apologize to all of you. I know a lot of you guys religiously sent me questions over and over and over again, and I am so sorry that I couldn't get to them. But I'll tell you, I have been remarkably busy on a variety of different projects. This past summer, I spent three months touring uh, all over the state of Texas, speaking at libraries. I think I, I think I spoke at 67 different Texas libraries in, uh, in that three months time. And it was, it was an incredible ride, probably bit off more than I could chew. That was a lot of talking, but uh, I enjoyed it. My most recent project is my most exciting. I'm very excited about this. Through the generosity of some very good friends of mine, I was able to get a grant to create something that I've been working on literally for the past 10 years, and I finally am able to bring this thing um, uh, to fruition. What it is, is um, it's an exhibit that's made to travel from town to town and go into schools, targeting really elementary schools, going into elementary schools and converting their gymnasiums or their uh, biggest rooms into natural history museums. I'm incredibly excited about it. It's going to allow me the opportunity to take a museum into some of these smaller communities that otherwise the kids may never get a chance to see some of the things that I've got. So I'll share more of that with you. I'll shoot a couple of videos as we're building this thing. The variety of creatures I'm going to have in this is simply amazing. It, it's, it's so cool. It is so cool. So, um, I'm so sorry that it's taken me so long. I appreciate all of you writing to me. I want you to know that uh, I, I still was reading a lot of yours, even though I didn't have time to answer them. I still was taking the time to read them because they do mean a lot to me. Um, we're going to kind of wipe the slate clean because so many of the questions are posted from so long ago. So starting now, if you've got a question, go to our website, dinosaurgeorge.com, click on the Ask Dinosaur George page, fill out the form and submit it. I'll do my best to try to answer your questions, but remember you guys, I still get a lot of questions every single week and I can't possibly answer them all. All right, I'll answer a couple of them on this, uh, this one just to uh, kind of get back into the groove. Charles from Huntington, Massachusetts writes and says, what is the smallest dinosaur? Charles, very good question. I get, a, I, I get this question a lot, and there's a lot of debate about what is the smallest known dinosaur. To the best of my knowledge, it still remains Micropachycephalosaurus. Now, that's a very, very long name for a very, very tiny dinosaur. Some people do not believe that that dinosaur is an adult. They believe that that's just a juvenile, so that would then mean the size you see doesn't represent a baby. There's other people, though, that say all of the evidence suggests this is indeed an adult dinosaur, and that's as big as he would get. So there's so many different new discoveries being made, I can't possibly keep up with them all. If anybody out there knows of a smaller dinosaur that's been discovered, I would love to hear a smaller adult dinosaur. I'd love to hear about it. But to the best of my knowledge, Charles, it still remains Micropachycephalosaurus. All right, Matthew from Lavernia, Texas. I was just in Lavernia, Texas, speaking at a uh, intermediate school the other day. Matthew, if you attend that school, I tell you, man, I had the time of my life. That was the cool, you guys are the coolest bunch of kids. You guys were great, and I really enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed it too. Matthew says, what era did T-Rex live in? Well, Matthew, there's basically three eras that dinosaurs lived in. That's the Triassic, Jurassic, and the Cretaceous. Then we take those eras and we divide them up between early, mid, and late. So Tyrannosaurus rex lived in the late Cretaceous between about six, uh, 50, uh, 50, about 66 to 65 million years uh, is when he lived. Um, we call it the late Cretaceous because that was about the end of the Cretaceous, around 60 five, 66 million years into the Cretaceous. So um, he lived at the very end of the Cretaceous. He was one of the last dinosaurs, but he was absolutely a very advanced dinosaur. Everything about him was pretty spectacular. I think people still underestimate how advanced he was simply because he's big. Sometimes we look at big things and we assume they can't have the intellect of a smaller thing. Um, a perfect example, uh, football players, the way they're often portrayed in, in movies out of Hollywood. If you're a football player and you're big, well, then that equates to being dumb. Well, nothing could be farther from the tooth. Um, did I say tooth? Farther from the tooth? I'm thinking about Tyrannosaurus Rex. Nothing can be farther from the truth. Size doesn't determine intellect. 
Um, it's your brain capacity. And Tyrannosaurus Rex, even though his brain was small compared to his body size, he is an incredibly effective dinosaur. I really like that guy. All right, Charles from San Antonio, Texas. I live in San Antonio, Texas. How much does a T-Rex weigh? Char uh, Charlie, this is, his name is Charlie, not Charles. I said Charles. Uh, Charlie. Charlie, um, very good question. Determining and estimating the weight of a dinosaur is very difficult because we can't simply put them on a scale and check their weight. We have to reconstruct their skeletal design and then apply muscles to that skeletal design based on how big we think the muscles are. Then we have to add things like how much did the internal organs weigh? Uh, how thick was the skin? How much did that weigh? How much did the muscle mass weigh? So oftentimes you see a huge variety of weights. I've seen from as little as five tons to as much as nine tons. In my best opinion, I think it probably ranges between six to seven might be a realistic number. It's never gonna be possible to know with absolute certainty, but scientists are using more and more technology to kind of give us a much greater idea of what these guys weighed. And so that would be my best guess. Um, until I can bring one back and put them on a scale, we're gonna have to go with that, Charlie. All right, finally, Davis from London, England says, how did velociraptors hunt? Davis, um, the fossil record tells us a lot of things, but it doesn't always explain behavior. And hunting is basically a behavior. It's how they act. So how did they act? How did they behave? How did they hunt? Very good question. Um, we can look at other animals that are similar. Now, when I say similar, I don't mean that look the same. I mean that sort of fill the same uh, niche in the, uh, in the environment. Well, I look at um, Velociraptor and what I kind of see as his or hers um, uh, equal would more would sort of be like wolves. Wolves probably act more like Velociraptor than than really predatory birds. Even though birds and Velociraptor are very closely related, their behavior was probably more like wolves. So I would think that they probably hunted in packs. They probably picked their uh, prey very carefully because being injured as a predator could injure life very quickly. So I think they were very careful about who they hunted. I think they uh, acted cooperatively, meaning they knew what to do in order to take down a certain kind of prey. In some cases, some may hide and one of the velociraptors may act as the decoy to run at them, to chase them into the waiting arms of uh, their, her, his other buddies. In other cases, they may just simply run you down and wear you out like a wolf, just wear out the prey until they couldn't fight anymore. They may have been ambush predators. They may have simply waited along a game trail and hoped something walked by. I think the, what determined how they hunted is what prey they were hunting. And they use different methods to be able to catch different prey. All right, you guys, it is so great to be back again. Uh, I hope to be able to make these a little more, uh, a, a little more often now. I, I'm on the road a little bit. I'm still traveling all over Texas and speaking at schools, but uh, I do get a little free time now, so I'll try my best to do it. If you've got a question, go to the website, the uh, dinosaurgeorge.com. While you're there, by the way, I just added a catalog and I just posted my new three DVDs on there. So you can go to the catalog and uh, order the DVDs if you would like. I've also got some cool t-shirts for kids on there. Uh, and I plan on adding a lot of other things. For all of you out there, I always appreciate your courtesy. It means a lot to me, and it certainly makes the world a better place. For all of you young people out there, one thing I want you to absolutely practice is practice your reading. Good reading skills are incredibly important, and they're gonna get you a long way. If you've got good manners and you've got good reading skills, I promise you folks, sky's the limit. You can be anything you wanna be. Till next time, I'll talk to you guys soon, and thank you so much for writing. See ya.